thirsty, come to the water, says the Lord. Though you have no money, come to drink with joy. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to everyone joining us at home. Whether we're here in God's house or, or at home, uh, let's just be mindful that uh, we are in the presence of our God. And God is present to us. Let's um, perhaps just in our heart just give God permission to, uh, to be present to us, to, uh, to speak his word to us today, to, to bring his healing grace, to, to restore us, to encourage us, to uh, empower us for this week ahead. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the Paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me to the entrance of the temple where a stream came out from under the temple threshold and flowed eastwards since the temple faced east. The water flowed from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He took me out by the north gate and led me right around the outside as far as the outer east gate where the water flowed out on the right hand side. The man went to the east holding his measuring line and measured off a thousand cupids. He then made me wade across the stream. The water reached my ankles. He measured off another thousand and made me wade across the stream again. The water reached my knees. He measured off another thousand and made me wade across again. The water reached my waist. He measured off another thousand. It was now a river which I could not cross. The stream had had swollen and was now deep water, a river impossible to cross. He then said, Do you see, son of man? He took me further, then brought me back to the bank of the river. When I got back, there were many trees on each bank of the river. He said, This water flows east down to the Abra and to the sea, and flowing into the sea it makes its waters wholesome. Wherever the river flows, all living creatures teeming in it will live. Fish will be plentiful, for wherever the water goes, it brings health and life teems wherever the river flows. Along the river on either bank will grow every kind of fruit trees with leaves that never wither and fruit that never fails. They will bear new fruit every month because this water comes from the sanctuary and their fruit will be good to eat and the leaves medicinal. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is for us a refuge and strength, a helper close at hand in time of distress. So we shall not fear, though the earth shall rock though the mountains fall into the depths of the sea. The waters of a river give to, to God's city, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within, it cannot be shaken. 
God will help it at, at the dawning of the day. The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, consider the works of the Lord, the redoubtable needs he has done on earth. The mighty, mighty Lord is with us. The God, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Praise and honour to you, you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Create, Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation. Praise, Praise and honour to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a Jewish festival and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now at the sheep pool in Jerusalem, there is a building called Bethzatha, in Hebrew, consisting of five porticos. And under these were crowds of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed. One man there had an illness which had lasted 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had been in this condition for a long time, he said, do you want to be well again? Sir, replied the sick man, I have no one to put me into the pool, and the water is disturbed. And while I am still on the way, someone else gets there before me. Jesus said, Get up, pick up your sleeping mat, and walk. The man was cured at once, and he picked up his mat and walked away. Now, that day happened to be the Sabbath, so the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath, you are not allowed to carry your sleeping mat. He replied, but the man who cured me told me, pick up your mat and walk. They asked, who is the man who said to you, pick up your mat and walk? The man had no idea who it was since Jesus had disappeared into the crowd that filled that place. After a while, Jesus met him in the temple and said, now you are well again, be sure not to sin any more, or something worse may happen to you. The man went back and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had cured him. It was because he did things like this on the Sabbath that the Jews began to persecute Jesus. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> if you were with us on Sunday, you may remember I, I referred to this vision from the prophet Ezekiel uh, that we heard in the first reading. Uh, the vision goes something like this. There was a, a trickle of water flowing out from the sanctuary in the temple. The sanctuary is the, the, like, you know, the tabernacle. This is the, we call this the sanctuary. is the place where God's presence was. Uh, and uh, eventually that trickle kind of uh, you know, found its way out of the temple and, and, and head towards the town. Uh, and um, it became a, a river. And everything that this, this water from the temple touched it, it brought life to uh, the, it made the waters wholesome and and the, and they were teeming with fish and and all the all the trees that were touched by this water uh, became fruitful and uh and luscious and um and their leaves were medicinal this is a vision of what happens when the grace of god touches our life when we allow the grace of god to touch our lives. I think that's a really important distinction, actually. I'll just refer to the gospel for a moment. Remember, Jesus sees the guy who's paralyzed, and what is he? What's the first thing he says to him? Do you want to be well again? Sometimes we need to um, actually allow God to give us the healing. We need to be prepared to, to receive it. Right? Sometimes we can um, we can be seeking after God but we don't really want God to change us, you know? And so Jesus asked him, Are you re do you really want to be changed? Are you sure? <laughs> and he says, yes, yes, I do. So this grace of God, when it touches our lives and when we're prepared, when we're really ready for God to change us, when we really God give, give God permission, then it brings wholesome, uh, it makes our life wholesome and it brings life, and it makes us medicinal for others, right? The grace of God. 
What I want you to notice about this image, though, is that the grace, the water doesn't remain in the temple, but it flows out. It flows out. And it, meet, it moves towards society. It moves towards the people. See, at the time, uh, God's presence was uh, reserved for the temple. Right? And, that, and, and in the time of Ezekiel, the people were, 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 were grieved deeply because they were in exile. They, they couldn't go to the temple anymore. So they, they didn't have that special access to God. And here um, God is getting, giving Ezekiel this, this vision to say, I'm coming to you. (laughs) I'm flowing out from the temple to you. You can't contain me to a temple. I'm coming to you. Yes, we encounter God in a a unique way here and and a very uh, unrepeatable way, sacramentally in the presence of one another and the priest and the word of God. But our encounter of God here is supposed to make us more sensitive to a God who is constantly coming to us wherever we are, through people and relationships, through our work, uh, through the beauty of creation, uh, through art and music and uh, through our, our trials and our suffering. God who is constantly flowing towards us, coming towards us. The goal, really, of our, of our spirituality, our spiritual lives, is to become more and more conscious of a God who is constantly flowing towards us. Because the more conscious we are of God, the more we can say yes to God when he comes. When he asks us, do you want to be healed? We can say yes, because we, we're conscious that he's, God's here, God's there, God's meeting me constantly. And here's the other thing to remember. The more that we recognise God flowing to us in our everyday lives, the more we allow God, that grace of God to, to make us whole and to bring us life, the more God can then use us uh, to be his instruments uh, so that he can flow into the lives of others, right? God can flow through us to others. The more that we allow him to make us whole. We become medicinal like those trees. God will use us as his water to flow into the lives of others. So just one practical way that we can become more conscious of God flowing towards us, coming to meet us in our everyday lives, in the very ordinary bits of our life, is just to take some time every day, ideally at the end of the day, but you may do it in the afternoon or the following morning, and just to think back, ask the Spirit to help you to see where he has been flowing to you that day. Because often we miss it, right? We're so caught up and we're not very present. You know, we've got 10,000 things going on at once. <laughs> just take some time. Say, God, where have you been flowing to me throughout this day or, or yesterday? And, and just notice that. And, and as you notice that, just give, give God thanks. And you might even kind of journal it. Uh, as a way of just capturing all the ways God is constantly flowing to you. Let us pray to God the Father who gave his own Son, the Word made flesh, to be our bread of life. May the message of Christ in all its richness live in our hearts. May the message of Christ in all its richness live in our hearts. Father, may we hear your voice this Lent and pass with Christ from death to life. May we celebrate his Easter feast with great joy and love. May the message of Christ in all its richness live in our hearts. Teach us to live by your spirit and help us to bring faith to those who doubt. May the message of Christ in all its richness live in our hearts. May may the knowledge of Christ um, penetrate our minds and our hearts. May it find expression in all our ways of living. 
May the message of Christ in all its richness live in our hearts. Purify your church in these days of salvation. Make her the living witness of your presence in the world. May the message of Christ in all its richness live in our hearts. Conscious of all uh, our needs at this time and the needs of our world, let's ask for Our Lady to pray with us and for us. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, and, women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, in praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed, that they attest, may they attest to your care as creator for this our mortal life and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and the purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Benedict, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and all honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, Our Father who art right in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily, daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Peace be carried. Peace be carried. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to this, the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. Fresh and green pastures, where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me.
Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies now and likewise in times to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in your day, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks be to God.